What is going on guys? My name is Chaotic and welcome back to another Grand Theft Auto 5 video here on my channel. Now in today's video I'm going to be doing a buyer's beware where I warn you guys which vehicles to avoid and not buy from the import and export update. There are two vehicles in particular which I wouldn't recommend purchasing because they have too many issues and flaws and one of those is the BF Ramp Buggy. Now don't get me wrong, it is a really awesome vehicle and honestly it's one of my favourite vehicles from the update. But unfortunately there are loads and loads of issues with this vehicle which simply let this vehicle down. So if you don't have a huge amount of money, I wouldn't recommend buying. It. Now sure, the vehicle itself looks very cool, it's really fun to use, but despite this vehicle supposedly being a ramp buggy, every vehicle you drive into to ramp or flip will do damage to the vehicle. And unfortunately, it doesn't take long before the vehicle is destroyed, as it has very little health. After driving into about 10 to 15 vehicles or so, you'll begin to notice the buggy begins to smoke a little, and then after about 25 to 30 vehicles, it will either catch on fire, giving you a few seconds to jump out before it blows up, or simply stop working altogether. So this vehicle is very limited and has a very short lifespan, which is a huge shame in my opinion, because I love this vehicle and it has so much potential, but unfortunately, despite this supposedly being a ramp buggy, having the ability to ramp up any vehicle at once, it doesn't last very long at all. If the vehicle was cheap, and didn't cost much to purchase, it wouldn't really matter and I would definitely recommend buying one as it is fun to use, but at $3.2 million to buy it right now, it's not exactly a bargain. But I know you guys are going to want to buy one of these anyway because it's a ramp buggy and it looks awesome. So here's one tip for you guys if you want to buy it. Do not buy this vehicle straight away and pay full price, as you're going to be paying a lot more money for it than what you could potentially be paying. It will cost you $3.2 million to buy it straight away, but if you complete 8 vehicle cargo missions, so that's simply stealing 8 vehicles and bringing them back to your vehicle warehouse, you'll then unlock the special vehicle work where you can then unlock this vehicle. And upon doing so, you'll then save yourself almost a million dollars on the Securo Serve Buy It Now price, and it will only cost you $2,400,000 instead. So if you are going to buy one, I would definitely recommend doing this. It won't take you long to complete 8 vehicle cargo missions and it will save you a lot of money in the process. But in my opinion, there are better vehicles to purchase from the import and export update, which cost a very similar amount and do pretty much the same thing. But let's move on to the second vehicle I'd also recommend avoiding from this update, this being the brand new Phantom Wedge. Now again, just like the ramp buggy, this thing is pretty awesome, it looks cool in so many different ways, but again, unfortunately, it also has limited health, and after driving into so many vehicles, it too will also get destroyed and blow up. But the Phantom Wedge is a lot stronger and a lot more durable than the ramp buggy, and can drive into almost twice the number of vehicles that the ramp buggy can. Like I said, the ramp buggy after about 25 to 30 vehicles or so will get destroyed, whereas the Phantom Wedge can drive into roughly 50 or so before it blows up. So again, unfortunately, the vehicle is not invincible and it doesn't take long before the vehicle destroys itself and is unusable. Although the Phantom Wedge is faster than the standard Phantom, it is still slower than the Ramp Buggy, but it is cheaper. The Buy It Now price for the Phantom Wedge is just over $2.5 million, making it only just more expensive than the Securo Surf price for the Ramp Buggy, but the Securo Surf price for the Phantom Wedge is roughly $1,900,000 making it a cheaper vehicle overall. And in my opinion, it's just as fun, if not even more fun. Not only is this vehicle more durable so you can drive into more cars before it sets on fire and blows up, but it's also bigger. And you know what they say, bigger is always better. But would I recommend buying one of these? Well, the answer is no, because there is in fact a vehicle available with the import and export update, which is just as good as these two vehicles, but it's also invincible. And that vehicle is the Armored Box Fill. Now maybe straight away it won't look quite as impressive as the other two vehicles because of the style Rockstar have given it, but in my opinion, it still looks great and its price is very similar to the other two vehicles. Certainly in a very similar price range, its buy it now price is just over $2,900,000 and the Securo Surf Trade price is $2,200,000. But most importantly, like I said, this vehicle is invincible. No matter how many vehicles you collide with, you'll never start smoking or set on fire or get destroyed. So you can drive into as many vehicles as you want and you haven't got to worry about taking damage. 
And the Boggsville can do pretty much exactly what the other two vehicles can do, just less dramatic. And I feel the reason for that is because the Boxville is slower than the other two vehicles. But nevertheless, you can still drive into any vehicle you want on the road and smash them out of the way. Sure, it might not flip them 10 meters into the air, but it does something very, very similar on a slightly smaller scale. And don't forget, the Boxville is armored. So if someone shoots an RPG at you or throws a sticky bomb in your direction, you will survive the first shot. And don't forget, the Boxville has a turret on the roof, which is certainly a very useful and handy tool. Plus, of course, the vehicle is a four-seater, unlike the other two, which are only two-seaters making the Boxville a much more useful vehicle when either driving around with some friends in free mode or of course participating in some work with your organization. So overall then, it's definitely the best vehicle out of the three. It is certainly the most practical and it's the one which I would recommend buying. But I want to get your thoughts and feelings on these three vehicles. Do you guys have a preference? Which one is your favorite? So go ahead and leave a comment on this video. It would also be greatly appreciated if you guys could also drop a like as well as it helps me out a lot. And if you have not subscribed to my channel, I'd recommend that you do because I upload all the latest and the greatest Grand Theft Auto 5 content. So as always guys, thank you for watching and I will see you guys next time.